you see here before you is a whole bunch of controllers. Six Coleco Vision and six Atom controllers. I took some time and I tested every one of them on my Atom computer. I have a program I wrote in Smart Basic that just basically gives me a little rough text display on the screen and I can test up, down, left, right, buttons and everything. So I went through and I went through every one of them and I wrote down what it was, what's wrong with each one. This one I just wrote down keypad not working, so yeah, it's the well keypad. The asterisk isn't working and then the four's got an edge on it. So other than that, that one works. So I'm gonna be going through all these and fixing them all and salvaging and putting things in. This one's good, but it's ugly. See? It's got a tear there, it's ugly, but good. The other ones, I mean this one is left and right. Um left and right's not working, right button dirty. Uh, right button dirty, simple ones like that. Those would be easy to fix. So I'm going to take these apart and see what I can do to fix them. Fire button dirty. See, some of these are ugly. I have some extra parts lying around here too that I can swap in back and forth and try to put them back together. I don't have a hair dryer here at my office, otherwise I'd pull these off and switch them around. But I'm going to build some. Give me a couple clean sets out of these. So, I'm just going to... I got four Atom ones. I'm going to do the Atoms first. That way, I just start with that. Get out my little box. This one just says right button's dirty, so this one is pretty good. It needs to be cleaned up bad, but other than that, it's pretty good. So I'm going to do that. Everybody has a phone in their life. My phone ding 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 dings. So let's remove this. Take these apart, like I said many times before, it's really easy. Just five screws. There is only one slight difference between the Atom controller and the ColecoVision controller, and I'll show you that in a moment when I get in there. Well, there's a couple of differences. The keypad's a little different on one versus the other. In how it's designed, not how it works. So I take those five screws out right there, then this lifts up and off, there's hinge back here, so you got little hinge pins, little hinge right here to catch. Now the difference between the ColecoVision controller and the Coleco Atom controller is on the Coleco, on the Atom, these wires are attached with really shitty connectors. When you try to pull them off, they break. We're on the Coleco Vision, they're soldered together, uh, I guess, I don't know. Maybe Coleco saved a penny doing this, I don't know. They didn't have to have somebody working the soldering line. But, that's what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I'm just going to give this one, we know the keypad works in this one. So I'm going to pull the buttons off there. I'm going to do my best not to mess with that. And I'm going to just clean this all out really good with the contact cleaner. And... Clean the outside with some Windex and stuff, and then once that's clean, we will test it out. Test all of them. I'm going to go through them all with this thing. Actually, I'll probably test it. I'm getting up. What I did is I sprayed down in the buttons, spraying under the metal here because that's where the metal contacts. It's like a little spring loaded piece of metal right there, and the metal. When it's pushed down, it bends. It makes contact with the circuit board. So I'm just going to do that. What you could also do to clean these two is take... Let's see, where is it at? I have a, had it here a while back. Where is it? Right here. Piece of just really, really fine sandpaper. 4,000 grit sandpaper. Where's my scissors? I'm going to just trim me a small little piece off. Just like that. Then you take your 4,000 grit sandpaper and you just slide it in between the controller or in between the piece there like that. Push down to engage it and just pull it out. And that way you're just like removing any buildup on it. And do the same thing going this way. Slide it in. Don't push it down. Too, don't hold it down too hard because you'll actually tear the same area. Just hold it down. 
with some, see you can see it's sanding a little. I'm going to just do each one the same way. In there, sand, turn it, go the other way. Get in there. It's like so. I'm just getting away any tarnish, any corrosion, any dust, any hair, any anything, I guess. This one's the hard one to get to. It's a little... Gotta like wiggle it in between. Let me go this, me on this end here. You gotta like wiggle it in between. There, to get down inside here. But if you just, if you just take your time and you do it, you can get it in there. Like so. Come on. Now you can also do this too. Let me just show you something else you can do here too. I can take this and I can just push this out. Like so. See? Pop that out of there. Now I can get to it from the top if I want. Then I can just hold it down, pull, put it in that way. Pull. Do these some more. I'm just cleaning the insides there. I'm going to give it a little more spray in here. Like so. Turn your fingers white when it dries. Or change its color. I don't know. Not everybody's going to be white. Maybe some people will get brown, green. I don't know. But it changes your skin color. Then put this back on here. Alright. That goes back in there just like so. Don't forget these. Before I do that, get my Windex. Get my. Raggy. Nope. Yeah. I got two brass brushes and one plastic brush. They all look exactly alike, and I didn't want to grab the brass ones. I'm just going to Windex these. Hit them with this just to make sure there's nothing in the cracks. Dry them off with this. Just like that. If they were really, really, really scurvy dirty, I would take and I'd soak them in the sink with dish soap for a while. But these seem to be relatively clean. And then I'm just going to take this, put this on here, and slide it in there. I want to make sure you put these back in. I have put cartridge, or controllers back together and then realized I forgot to put the buttons back in. Now these are good here. I'm going to clean that though. Take my rag here. I'm just going to wet it. I'm just going to wipe down this because you can't get to all of it once the top is down and sorry about the noise there people are closing doors outside in the hallway yeah just like that but once this is on here you can't get down inside those little cracks and crevices now I'm going to take and I'm going to hold this in place easiest way to do is take your finger put this underneath the hooks take your finger to hold that take your finger to hold that down where, where I want to put it here Hold those under the hooks. Use your finger to hold that down until you get it in place. That way it doesn't move around. Okay. Then we flip it over. Easiest screw to put in first is the center one. That's the one that's going to go into that plastic that we pulled out. If we can get that in there. I got a magnetic screwdriver so it's lifting it back up on me. I mentioned this little trick before. When you put your screw in there, first thing you do once you put your screwdriver in the hole, Unscrew it until it clicks. Once it clicks, then go for screw it in. That way you're lining the screw up with the original threads that were made when you, before the screw was taken out. And you're not going to take a chance. You're going to be less likely, I would say, less likely to break the standoff by creating new threads. Stand up. Um, you know what I mean. The, the part that this, the little screw screwing in, the flat little plastic standoff, I guess is my word. So there we go. We got that there. And what I'm going to do now is take my Windex again. Windex is good because it dries relatively quick and cleans. 
though if it's something's really dirty don't try to rely on scrubbing it with Windex take the thing apart scrub it clean with soap and water I take my plastic brush and I get down into the crack here just to make sure nothing's left in there I didn't see anything when I first did it so it's got some discoloration in it but this one's relatively clean I have some dirty ones controllers can be very dirty especially if you think about over the last 40 years how many kids or adults for that matter have held it in their grubby little paws and done things with it all right now here is the next one this one just says good music cleaning so we're going to take that one off we're just going to give it a good cleaning I don't need to pull it apart since it needs to see the cleaning I could but I every time you open these things up you take a chance on breaking those little wires in this so I'm not going to do that now that number one there is this is regular isopropyl alcohol 91 percent let's see if I can get it off with that I don't know what it's written on with um, doesn't look like it's coming off that way magic marker I don't know what did they use on that but alcohol is not pulling it off I may end up having to do something else let's see let's try some where are you at you're out here somewhere there you are right in front of my eyes you didn't even see it let's try some water fluid this can help sometimes get stuff loose we'll try that a little bit of the Zippo lighter fluid, naphtha, it's called in some parts of the world. Let's try that. That's not touching it. That's not touching it at all. Okay. Now, we can try one last thing here. Let's wipe it off. One last thing we can try is lubricant. WD-40. Generic version. This works good. I'm removing stains sometimes. I'm going to put some in there. I won't want to spread it because I don't want to get on everything. Let's just see what that does. See if that cuts it. It does remove magic marker off of the cases. If you have magic marker or anything on a plastic case, that will remove it off most of the time. That didn't touch it either, so whatever they did it with is a permanent thing. So. I just may have to end up leaving that there. Yep, okay. It's going to be a permanent th part of it until I get some replacement stickers, which I actually I may have replacement decal or replacement discs there and some damaged ones I can take and pull them off with the hair dryer. So let's just give this a good soaking. Let it start building its way in. I'm going to take this, I'm going to go into the cracks. Make sure there's nothing in there. Go around and use one of these nice and clean like that. There you go. Just like that. Down in here. The edge. Again. In here. See, just just clean it up really good. I mean they're these are actually in pretty good shape. They're not filthy. They're just dirty or dusty. So we're gonna just clean them really good. I'm going to hear some noise outside. I guess the bagel shop's closed for the day and the employees come up here to their break room to get their clothes and, I don't know, I guess talk about the bagel stories they have for the day. I don't know. But it's not permanent. It just lasts for like one minute and then you're so. Blow it in. See what I did there? See, like it looks like it's dry, but if I blow on it, there's still some in there. I want to get it all out. Even though it will dry. So yeah, that one's clean. I'll do something about that. I'll replace it with another one. The next one we're doing is the match this number two. So it's kind of like cute in a way that they were marked them one and two, but we're gonna have to do something about this. This one it says it has a dirty right button, so I actually do have to pull this one apart. 
And then when I get all done doing these, I'm going to plug them all into the atom and I'm going to test it one again and see if anything got missed. And then I'll go back and repair those. Now some of these, the ones that have like bad keyboards and stuff like that, I'm going to test along the way. I'll off camera and plug into the atom, make sure everything's good. If I don't see an obvious issue, if I open it up and I see an obvious issue that the keyboard's bad, well, I can fix that right then. But this one was, which way did it say? Didn't it say right button? Yeah, button's dirty. Right button sticky. Okay, so we're just going to look at things here real quick. Now, see this? See how it's moving there? That could be your issue. See, the rest of these are pretty tight, but that one's moving. Right button wasn't working. It could be just that. I don't know if you can actually see that, so let me just lift this up higher so you can see better. These, if they're not seating well, will not. See, the rest of these are pretty good. But that one's moving. Now, can I tighten that? So this is where the issue comes. See those things? If I, if they don't, it's a very fragile, um, hang on, look, there we go. it's very fragile, not those, I want my needles. This metal, metal is very fragile, and I don't want to crush it, I just want to close it up a little bit. I wonder if I can tap it closed a little bit. I'm be tapping with it. Yeah, but tapping it, I can control how much it's moving. Okay. It barely moved at all. And they, they have the colors written on the circuit board here, so that makes it nicer. There, that's better. Could do a little tighter. We're running the risk of it breaking, and I have to get out the soldering iron and solder it. This may have been a great idea when they decided to do this, but yeah, it's got a better connection now when they decided to do this, but it's not a good idea now. While I got it out, just like the other one, I'm going to take, I'm going to deoxid the whole thing, pop that out of there. I'm not, these were good, so I'm not going to worry too much about them, but this did say the right button, so I'm going to deoxid clean, electrical cleaner in here and all of them. And I'll, I'll just call it anyways. Make sure it's all nice and clean inside. I'm going to just take this. I'll do this real quick. It only takes a second. Now these little metal springs. I've had controllers come in that the metal springs had rusted somehow and these metal contacts, flexible springs, whatever you want to call them, had rusted and broken. And Nate, you can actually, if you have a parts board, like a controller that is just totally beyond usable, you can remove them and transfer them to a good one. It's not that hard. It's only held on by right here, blob of solder, blob of solder. So you can do that. Look, I didn't need cleaned inside. No, nope. yeah, well, we should put that on there because that will probably help. There. I'm pretty sure that's required. Now, I'm going to take and I'm going to my finger through here to hold it in place while I line this up. Like I said, put this in here, take my finger, hold this in place while I line this up. And get it down in there and make sure it's locked in place. There we go. Make sure everything's lined up and locked in. They always sound so chintzy when you warm around. They got creaks and groans and stuff. 
I don't know if they sounded like that 40 years ago, but they do sound like that now. The plastic makes all its cracking noises when you move it around. I didn't... I didn't have a ColecoVision back in the day, 40 years ago. I had an Atari 2600 and then I graduated from the 2600 to computers. I went to the Timex Sinclair 1000, the PC4, which was a handheld, um, stop it, get back, don't you dare try to run away. The PC4, which was a handheld pocket computer from Radio Shack, which I kind of liked, even though it only had a like a calculator screen on it. I did like it. And then after that, I went to the Atari 600 XL. And after the 600 XL, I what did I go after that? 600 XL. Then I moved on to um, the TRS80 Model One. I bought that and I built a complete system over months by buying used parts so I had the TRS-80 Model 1, I had the expansion unit, I had the monitor, had three disk drives, had the original line printer, I had everything that was all TRS-80. Had that and then the TI-99s and then the Big 20s, Commodore 64s, every other Atari ever made. I never went to the 16 bits, I never did the, the Atari ST or the Amigas or the Macs. I did have Apples. Anyways, so we're going to give that one a try and see what happens. Well, we'll give it a test later and see what happens with it. I'll get the next one. Alright, this one says, right button and keypad. So there's something wrong with the keypad. So this will be one that I'm going to test as soon as I pull it apart and take a look at it. You know, I'm going to do the smart thing. This time. I'm going to take my piece of tape off. Instead of bowling it up, I'm going to stick it over here. So if I have to refer back to the tape in five minutes, I can see what it is. What it is. That was Robin Williams. One of his stand-ups. He would be doing, talking about how the people on the streets used to talk to each other back in the 70s. He'd go, what it is. Kind of funny. Back when him and Richard Pryor used to do those things. So, let's see what we got in here. We know it's right button, and it says keypad. Let's see what we got here. Well, I'm gonna. Got a bug. Got a dead bug in here. Keypad's not all the way in. So that could be the possibility that somebody took it apart and didn't know how to put it back together and the keypad didn't go back in. So I'm gonna open this up. Let's check my wires here, everything. Let me see, got some movement on those too. I'm going to let them go this time and see what happens. You can also do something else too. Here, I'll show you. You can also do this. Take a piece of black electrical tape. It's a non-destructive way of helping fix that. Take your black electrical tape. Snip off a little piece. And just take, once you have, make sure all they're all in place. Just throw it on there. Put it on there. It just stops them because once they're inside there, there's nothing pulling on them. It's got a strain relief up here. They're not coming apart. Yeah, someone's had this one apart because that tape's gone. There's a piece of tape that holds in here for the strain relief. So somebody's had this apart. So there's nothing that's going to pull them around and make them come loose. I'm going to show you how to fix that. But first off, let's do this. Then I'm going to show you how to do my little nifty trick I discovered. I'm going to do the same thing inside this one. I'm going to pop that out and deox this one or contact cleaner, whatever you want to call it. You get in there really good. You get in there, you get clean. Yeah, see that's the dead bug there. Bug carcass. I wonder what kind of bug that was. Hopefully it's not something that's going to come after me later. It's going to rise from the dead and kill me. So, just go in here and just going to clean this up. Do I need to do this? Well, it wasn't bad. It didn't. I didn't get a notice saying it or anything saying this went bad. So. I didn't have to do it, but since I already have it open, I'm already spraying for the button. I might as well do this too. It's not gonna hurt. And it will help. And that's that. Take this home. Okay, they're not dirty, so I'm not too worried about scrubbing them outside of the case. And that one too. Alright, now. 
that there, and that. Lock that in there. Now, to put these in, there's a trick. See, this has been out. It's not in all the way, so I'm going to pull it out. There's a trick to putting these back in. Let's take a look at this. I'm just going to see, is there any traces that are broken in here? Okay, the, if you flip the back, you look, you don't see any cracks going through the traces. So the traces aren't broken. That's a good thing. But if you also look, they were barely making contact anywhere. Now, the trick to doing this is, I have to find some down here on my desk. Every time I make one, I always get rid of it afterwards. Here we go. Okay, so what I do is you take a piece of cardboard, this regular card stock like this, trim the edges off of it. I want it to be the same width as that. Okay, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to, I guess I can do it like that. Take that like that. And I'm going to fold this back so that it's double thickness right there. I mean, I can even be so cute as to take a piece of masking tape just to hold it down. Alright, so, a piece of masking tape to hold it down like that. So I got double thickness there, some masking tape. Now what you do is you take this and you set that right here. I'm putting the fold down so it's nice and smooth on the top here. You put that right there. Why am I putting that right there? Because if you look at this, see how the connector is got plastic under it so the connector is up in the air. If you try to push this in there, the connector is going to want to bend and flex and you can end up breaking it and snapping it off or causing cracks in it. So what you do is you put that in there, all right? Now with that there, I can take and I can lay this connector flat on that board, on that cardboard I just put there. Push it in to get it started. Like this. See, I'm just going to work it into the plastic to make sure I get it in, get in there. It wants to roll up, so you got to, you got to be careful. You can flex it down a little bit, try to make it so it doesn't want to roll. But once you get it into the plastic in there, like almost, there, almost there, almost there. Okay, once it's in the plastic. I'm pushing down on the cardboard, and I'm just going to wiggle this in. See? I'm wiggling it in until it's nice and tight in there. That holds it up in the air so that you don't break it. Because these things are, I don't think you get a replacement for them. I hate these keypads. I really wish they were real buttons. Because if you ever looked at the Atom, they show this as a numeric keypad that can attach to the side of the keyboard. Oh, that reminds me. Somewhere in here, I got a keypad holder. I just remember that I bought one of them. But you can use this as a numeric keypad on the side. I believe when you're in Smart Writer, maybe an Atom Calc, it actually, if it's plugged in, you can actually use this as a keypad to type in numbers. Which is pretty good if you like doing accounting stuff, but in all honesty, this keypad, you think you can type numbers in there confidently, know that every number that you typed has gone in? Uh, no. The travel on it is zero. It makes creaking noises all the time. But if it had a true buttons on there, it'd make a great nice little keypad, because I love having numeric keypads, especially if I'm doing a lot of coding and i got to type in a bunch of numbers. I want a numeric keypad, and... This is not a new Mac keypad. See, it goes on next to the Atom, like you've all seen that. And then you can type it in. But you really, can you type it? Can you think you can type a phone number? What is it? Eight seven three five nine three seven. I think that's eight seven three five nine three seven. Jenny, I, I got it confused with the yellow one, but squeeze. Eight five three five nine three seven. Angela can't make it to the phone by squeeze. I like that one too. So I'm going to give this a quick little test off camera. Later on, we'll test them all where everybody can see. But I just want to check the keypad, see what I ended up with. Okay, so unfortunately, the keypad is still totally dead, which means there's probably something broken in the keypad itself. So this may end up being a donor or a parts machine. But we're going to set it over to this. We're going to set this to it in the pile of go back to later. All right, so that was the last Atom one. Now I have a Coleco one. And this one says, 
Fire your buttons dirty. At least that was my preliminary thought on it. So let's take the tape off and we will try this one next and see what we get. And this is the since this is the first Coleco one I'm opening up, you're going to see the slight differences between it and the Atom controllers. Not many differences, but again, the main difference is that these are soldered. The Atom have those little chintzy clips, and oh, my screwdriver's falling apart. And um, the other difference is the actual keypad has like a different font on the keypad, which I don't know if that really anybody would ever really notice. I noticed it. Listen, this, is, this one's been through a lot too. Oh wow, this one actually isn't soldered. Oh, this must have been late run. Like this must have been later on in life. It wasn't doing the originals. The originals are all soldered for these. Well, I think this is the first Coleco Vision one that I have seen that is it's not soldered. Fascinating. Okay, so we're going to clean the buttons anyways. That's what this one said it was. And I'm going to pop this and I'm going to do the that part too, the directions. But that's not it. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then this. Again, this one didn't have any issues with the directionals. The directionals were fine. It was just the fire button. But we're going to clean this anyways. We're going to eliminate it. Then when I do my full test of all of them, I can then narrow it down to maybe two or three that have to be worked on and so forth. But for now, we're going to do them all like this. These are dirty. This one's really grubby, so I'm going to just clean it up while it's still apart. Let's get that dust out that you can't get to once the, it's back together. Okay. That there. These in here, and obviously that keypad is getting a nice scrubbing. Once I get that there, got that. Now, keypad. Look at that. 40 years of dirt gone. It looks so pretty. Now we're going to put that back on there. Start putting everything back together. Then we'll clean the outside. What I do is, just as a background, you, you know I you you know I write games and stuff. That's my thing now. But what I've been doing for seven years, eight years, is I browse eBay on a daily basis, just looking for things, looking for deals, looking for things where people don't know what they've got and they're selling it or their estate sales or you see something that's bundled I mean, like for instance when it came to these controllers here somebody had a ColecoVision test it doesn't work and they had four controllers there and they wanted 30 bucks well, guess who bought it for 30 bucks because even if the ColecoVision is just a parts machine sorry about the noise out there I guess it's the rest of them are going home yeah but even if the ColecoVision is dead and becomes a part machine, 
these four controllers are worth 30 bucks. Now, I also, and I mean, if you're into the Atom, if you're not just Clean Division, but if you know what the Atom is and how it works, you know the rarity of disk drives. And I bought, I've got disk drives in the past that I come across them, and the person selling them had no idea what they have or didn't care what they have. It's just, most of the time, it's not collectors that don't know what they have, because collectors are people that use it. They know what they got. But these are either estate sales and actually I wouldn't even say it's like professional estate sales it's more like people are just like dad died so we're selling all of his stuff because we don't want to bother to keep it even though dad loved his Adam computer and everything he had we're gonna sell it because we want some money to go to Las Vegas estate sales really piss me off when it comes to that because people just I mean, if you ever been to an estate sale and you see out there on the table that they're selling is photo albums full of pictures of the kids what's wrong with people but anyways as I was saying, most of the time what I buy is estate sales. And just when something says untested and it's pretty cheap, don't jump on it immediately unless you desperately need it or you, de or you definitely know you can fix it if it's destroyed. But take a moment and just look at what everything else the person's selling. If the person is, if the person is selling a whole bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with computers, basically like thrift store items they were, you can honestly be kind of confident in knowing that the person has no clue what they have and they didn't bother to test it. Now, if on the other hand, the person is selling nothing else but that one item, disk drive, whatever it is, or they're selling a Clico Atom disk drive and an Atom and a printer and a ton of software and all kinds of other stuff like that, that guy knows what they had. And he's trying to point it off as untested when it definitely was tested and he knows it's bad. But the reason why I'm bringing up the disk drive is I was perusing and a couple days ago and someone listed a disk drive on eBay. It popped up on my screen. And first off, they just put it in vintage computers. They didn't put it in the... Or they, they just put it in computers. They didn't put it anywhere else. And they misspelled ColecoVision. They called it the ColecoVision, but it was V-S-I-O-N. Probably a typo error, but it's not a ColecoVision atom. It was a, it's a Coleco atom. Disk drive. And in there, and they showed pictures of it. It's the disk drive. It's a power supply. Well, pretty good, clean condition, didn't look broke or anything like that. And in the description they said, tested works. I looked at all the items they had for sale, and it was basically, it was your game store stuff, like somebody had a game store, and they're selling the, all the various games for different things, like, um, I don't know, PlayStation, things like that. And they wanted $75 for it plus shipping. I got that thing immediately, 95 bucks, even if it doesn't work, it's a good parts machine at that price. And then about three hours later, they got to me and they said that they may, you may that I may want to cancel the order because they made the mistake of using of saying it was tested and it wasn't tested. And I told them, I said, that's fine. I mean, if you feel guilty, take $20 off, but otherwise I'm still okay with it, even if it's not tested. So anyway, it's on its way here, and we'll find out. If it don't work, then I'm going to fix it. If it does work, then I did great. Anyways, I'm about out of time for this one, so I'm going to set this one over here to the side, and I'm going to catch up on these others tomorrow.